very excited to be here in LA. Uh, we have quite a few players uh, from Southern California on our current team, um, certainly on a lot of our past teams. And for our great fans, uh, this is an area that's very easy for them to get to. And uh, we look forward to all of, uh, all of those things coming together for us here tomorrow. Uh, we know that we're playing against uh, a great team, a team that's been in a Final Four a year ago. Several members of this year's team in Ohio State have won multiple Big Ten championships, whether it's in the tournament or during the regular season. I know this year the Big Ten was an incredible conference. And the fact that they've won, I believe, 10 games in a row coming in, uh, we know that it's, it's about Arizona being at our best. Anything less, we won't. Uh, be able to uh, to beat a team as good as Ohio State is. So we look forward to, to uh, that opportunity and grateful to be here in the Sweet 16. Great. Open it questions right there. Yeah, Coach, uh, I'd seen it written, the matchup between you and Thad is kind of frenemies. Can you talk about the mindset you take into the game against him this time and also what he's meant to your career? Yeah, you know, if, I think if we were playing uh, a regular season game, you know, our, our relationship might affect things a little bit more. But, you know, when you're playing for a, a berth in the Elite Eight or an opportunity to become uh, a part of the Final Four, you know, it's so much about the team, the game, the players in, uh, in both of our teams. So I think both of us are really focused on, uh, on preparing and being at our best. You know, having said that, uh, when you lose the game, and uh, hopefully that won't be me, uh, it's a little bit easier, I believe, to deal with because uh, no matter who Ohio State plays, I always cheer for them because of my relationship with that. And uh, what he's meant to me is, is simply I, I wouldn't be here today without him. Um, I learned a lot from him, enjoyed being around him when we worked together, and, uh, and we remain very good friends. Right here. Sean. Um Thad is uh, three time zones away from home, and he doesn't, he doesn't, when he can control the schedule, he doesn't do this a lot. I just wanted to ask you your background with him when you were at Xavier. Uh, was he as averse to travel at Xavier as he is now, and, and why is that, if you, if you know? No question about it. Um, when we would go recruiting together at Xavier, we could be as far as eight hours away, and it could be 10 o'clock at night, and he would give you that look like, ah, why don't we just get home? And you just say to yourself, why don't we just stay in a hotel and drive tomorrow morning or fly? But it was always drive, and it was always there and back. And you're right. Uh, he doesn't like to go far from home. That's probably what makes him as, as great as, as he is at Ohio State because of the, the terrific location for recruiting and everything that surrounds that place. But I guess if there's one small advantage we have is – we have him in a place that he's not real familiar with a long way from home. A uh, reminder, please identify yourself before asking your question. Over here. Yeah, uh, Paul Keels from the Ohio State Radio Network. Sean, if you would talk a little bit about the Buckeyes on the court and what they do that concerns you there. <clears throat> well, um, I watch Ohio State a lot. I think they're a remarkable defensive team. And very, you can admire the way they play defense. It, it starts not only with Aaron Kraft, who I think is the best at what he does defensively. But Shannon Scott, to me, doesn't get nearly enough credit. They almost have a, two guards that just ball hawk your team and make defense easier sometimes for their other players. But they do it really, really well. They're connected. They play with great effort. And uh, it's amazing how well they play defense against the conference that they played in. Um, on offense, <clears throat> It's not like they're a bad team on offense. I think they, they're really good. They're not as talented maybe as some of the most recent Ohio State teams, but they make up for it with really unselfish and togetherness. Um, and they have a guy who gets 20 every night, Deshaun Thomas, who you know, from a scoring perspective uh, is as good as it gets. So they play together on both ends of the floor. Aaron Kraft is exceptional at what he does. Deshaun Thomas is equally exceptional at what he does. And, they have a lot of other really good players that, that play Ohio State basketball. Jill Painter, LA Daily News. Sean, um, I know you've, you've heard along with the, the rest of us and, and uh, critics and people saying the West region is 
this is the worst regional or not going to be the sexy one. Um, if you had to kind of put your marketing cap on, how would you sell these two matchups? If it's the worst regional, good. Great. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> I mean, the thing about the tournament is, uh, you know, nobody looks back and says, boy, what an easy road or hard road. You either advanced or you didn't. You either won and moved on. Uh, one of the things that strikes me about the tournament is you go from what we're doing right now and the build up towards this great game that we've all hoped we could be a part of. And then if you lose about 15 minutes later, someone comes in and says, coach, your plane will be leaving in about an hour. And the other team moves and, and the stage continues to grow. So I don't think you can worry about who you're playing, how you got here. Um, we're in the Sweet 16. There's four teams here in the West region. And I know the team that we're playing tomorrow can win a national championship. So we have to focus on trying to compete against them and be at our best. And if this region isn't strong, thank goodness. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm here. Rashawn Haylock, Fox Sports West. Uh, Coach, a lot of the Pac-12 coaches speak very fondly of, of Solomon. What do you feel, in your opinion, is an underrated aspect of his game? And why does that make him so, so pivotal to you guys? Well, I said it in the, after the last game, Solomon Hill reminds me of Damian Wilkins, who's had a long NBA career. I had the opportunity to be on the staff uh, with Damian many years ago. And I, I, I say that because Solomon's greatest characteristic, like Damian's, is his will, his incredible work ethic, his, his competitive spirit. He's been our best practice player from the day he stepped on our campus as a freshman to his last days as a senior. Each week, and I know a lot of coaches do things like this, uh, we reward our best practice player statistically. Every statistic that you can put into it with a gold jersey. So that player wears a gold jersey for the next week. And while he has the gold jersey on, he doesn't have to run for losing and do those things. This week in Solomon's last or final week here where we're at, he, uh, he has the gold jersey which I think is fitting because, if I'm not mistaken, he might have had it in the first month of his freshman year. So he's a terrific player, but what he really embodies is far more than that. He's a leader. He's matured off the court as much as any kid that I've been around, and you know we're really proud of him. He deserves to be here, and I know that with him on our team, it's one of the many reasons we feel like we can advance.